welcome to night number 76 of History Bedtime Stories in our pajamas in bed. Tonight we're talking about the SS Edmund Fitzgerald. The Edmund Fitzgerald was the largest ship on the Great Lakes in its time and remains the largest shipwreck in Great Lakes history. The ship is constructed between 1957 and 1958 by the Great Lakes Engineering Works and she is christened on June 8th, 1958. Hundreds of people come for the christening and the launch and she has her maiden voyage that September. Things go largely without problem. In fact, the ship is a marvel. It is the biggest ship on the Great Lakes at 729 feet long. It's also 13,632 tons empty. Empty. That's before you load it down with iron ore pellets, which is its normal cargo coming from Wisconsin into Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan. The vessel is named the SS Edmund Fitzgerald to honor the chairman of the board for the Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company. On September 6, 1969, though, about 11 years after her launch, we start running into trouble. While crossing uh, through the Sioux Locks, the Edmund Fitzgerald runs ground. And near the Sioux Locks, when it runs ground, it has massive internal and external damage. It's a big problem. The ship has to go in for some massive body work. Within a year, we're back in trouble. April 30th, 1970, the SS Edmund Fitzgerald collides, runs into another freighter, causing damage to both vessels. Then in September of 1970, she hits a lock wall. January 7th, 1974, she loses her bow anchor in the Detroit River near Belle Isle. And it is problem after problem, disaster after disaster. But the ship remains a boat watcher's favorite, a ship nerd's delight, partly because of its early captain, Peter Pulser. Peter Pulser as a captain was good spirited and jolly and he was known to play music through the ship's intercom day or night when coming into port so that people who'd gathered to watch the freighter could hear the music. He would also take to the intercom while going through lock systems to give a history of the vessel and tell everybody about his ship's magnificent length and accommodations, how much freight it could carry and why it was so special. But on November 9th, 1975, the ship sets out on an ill-fated journey. Now under Captain Ernest M. McShorley, the ship leaves Superior, Wisconsin, loaded down with iron ore pellets, set for delivery to Zug Island here in Detroit. By November 10th, 1975, the very next day, there is a storm of biblical proportion. It is snow and sleet and wind and rain. Visibility is nothing. And it is incredibly dangerous for the mariners on the Great Lakes. Sometime after 7 p.m. on the evening of November 10th, 1975, the Edmund Fitzgerald sinks near Whitefish Bay. All 29 men aboard were lost. Over the years, there's been salvages of the ship. And in fact, its bell was brought up in the 1990s and is part of the Michigan Shipwreck Museum. But maybe the most fitting tribute to the SS Edmund Fitzgerald was penned in 1976 by Gordon Lightfoot. The wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald remains a classic song, putting the ship's loss not only into maritime history, but into pop culture. I hope you've been enjoying History Bedtime Stories. Give us a like and a share. Wash your hands, and we'll see you tomorrow night.